Welcome everyone to our review of the Haftorah. This week, the Parsha of Noah. So everyone knows that the, the theme, the storyline of the Parsha of Noah is all about the flood. At the end of Parsha, other things happen also. But here, the flood is the, the big story of the book, of the, the par portion of Noah. And so, obviously, the Haftorah is going to have some connection. And here, it, it's, uh, I have to point out, it's, uh, this is, is a rare thing about this Haftorah. It's one of the only Haftorahs, I think there's uh, th around three, that appear twice in the year. This Haftorah is repeated in Parsha Ki Tetze. It's the same Haftorah, but it's, it's there for a different purpose. In Parsha Ki Tetze, after uh, Tisha B'av, after Tisha B'av, from Tisha B'av to Rosh Hashanah, there are seven Haftorahs of consolation. The first one is called Nachamu Nachamu. God is consoling the Jewish people. And of course, this happens right after Tisha B'av. But all seven weeks from Tisha B'av till Rosh Hashanah are uh, 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 Haftorahs, words of the prophets of consolation. And this is one of them. But here it's read for a different purpose. And this is from Isaiah also, the 54th chapter, verses 1 through 10. And then, according to Sfardim, um, Sfardim conclude after 10 verses. Ashkenazim continue for another almost 15 verses. So, towards the end of the part that everyone reads, God is consoling the Jewish people. And uh, I'll read from the sixth verse, where it says, Ki isha azuva ba'atsuvat ruach karach Hashem v'ashed nu'arim ki tim'es amar elokecha. So here, and we see this a lot in the books of the prophets, where the Jewish people are sometimes compared to an unfaithful wife. That we have this idea that one of the many ways that we relate to our relationship with God is that we are married to God. God is as if the husband and the Jewish people are the wife. And sometimes we haven't been so loyal. So here in the Haftorah, it says... For like a wife who has been forsaken and, and is of melancholy spirit, that's how Hashem will, will call to you. And like a, a wife of one's youth who had become despised. In other words, God was, has become upset with the Jewish people at different times in history. But look what it says next. It's a beautiful Pasuk that says, but really, only for a short moment have I abandoned you. But with great compassion, I will gather you back to me. And then a few verses later, it says, Ki me noach zot li asher nishbati. So here, this is a connection to Noah. Why is this the Haftorah? So God says, just like the waters of Noah, shall this statement that I just made be to me. In other words, just like I promised never to destroy the world again, like I did at the time of Noah. It's called the waters of Noah. 
here also, I also have uh, promised really never to forsake you, never to abandon you. Even though there are times in history, it appears that God is very angry with us. God hides his face from us. And sometimes terrible things happen to the Jewish people. But here, God, and he's using the, the imagery of, uh, just like he promised Noah never to destroy the world again, he's promising the Jewish people that no matter what happens, I will never abandon you. I will never forsake you. So that is the reason why we read it here. In Parsha Kitetse, before Rosh Hashanah, we read it just for the consolation. And as we go through the Haftorah, most of the Haftorah is about consolation. Here, I want to point out just one more verse. And that's really what I can do in a, in a short amount of time, is almost every Haftorah has some super important verse that we recognize or, or included in, in the prayers or in Jewish tradition. So here, it says like this. This is the, the beginning of the 55th chapter, the first verse. Hoi, kol tzama l'chu l'mayim. Asher ein lo kesef l'chu shivru v'achlu l'chu shivru below kesef below mechir yayin v'chalav. Here it says, all who are thirsty, let them come to the water and even those who have no money, go and eat and drink what, what you need without payment and without uh, a, a price, wine and milk. So what is this verse really talking about? So all the commentaries say the same thing. We, we have this expression, Ain Mayim el Torah. Anytime the word water, Mayim, is mentioned in the Torah, in the prophets, it's also an allusion to Torah itself. So here it says, all who are thirsty, let them go to the water. All who are spiritually thirsty, let them come to the Torah. And even if you have no money, you have no payment, you have no merit. You like like Rachav, for those who are part of the uh, Book of Yeshua class. Just like Rachav, after an entire life of living a certain way, did tshuva like any of us can. Like any of us, after a lifetime, we can totally change. So everyone, if you're thirsty. Come to the water, come to the Torah. And you don't have to have lineage. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have merit. You don't have to have education. You don't have to have experience. You can start from, from, from scratch and you can acquire the Torah. You don't need any money. And what you'll acquire is yayin, and chalav, wine and milk. These are symbolic. Yayin is the numerical value of sod. The secrets of the Torah are always compared to wine. Seventy faces to the Torah. This is the wine of Torah. And chalav is white, which represents spirituality, is pure is light. So everyone come to the Torah and you'll end up with wine and milk. So that is a quick review of the Haftorah for the Parsha of Noah.